Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Morning. Welcome to Faith and Healing School, Abundant Grace Church. Another beautiful day in the Lord. Certainly are blessed. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity and this privilege to stand here and to tell people how much you love them, Lord. That's the basis for everything that you have done. It's your love. Father, I yield myself today to you, to the Holy Spirit. I'm a willing vessel for you. Use me, Father. Say the things that you want said. Let the words go forth to meet people right at their point of need, Lord. Let everybody listening be expecting to hear from you today, Lord. We come humbly before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We have Faith and Healing School every Tuesday through Friday. We welcome everybody that came here. We welcome everybody that's watching online. Everybody's welcome to come. The classes aren't built upon one, one another. You could start anywhere. You can start coming, come whatever days you, you, can, you can make it here. If you can only make Tuesdays, just come on Tuesday. You're not going to miss out if you don't get to the rest of the days. And you can always catch up and watch all of the past videos and any one you missed on our YouTube channel, WAGC TV One. You can catch everything on uh, our website, AbundantGraceChurch.com. You can reach us through the website. Send us email. There's a phone number there. You'll get somebody. We want to bring everybody together. We want to unify the church because there's power and there's strength and unity. So we offer many opportunities for people to get together. Sunday service, Wednesday service evening in evenings at ten o'clock at seven o'clock. It's women's Bible study Tuesdays at eleven thirty here. Women's outreach on Thursday nights at six o'clock. Men's fellowship is on a special event schedule. It doesn't have a regular set schedule, but we do many events during the year. Bring the men together. And we do events together as a church, besides our regular services. And we have healing school four days a week. There's no reason you can't join together. Join your faith like these people do. Join together in the name of the Lord. Build each other up. Encourage one another. That's what we're here to do. Encourage one another. Bring new people into the faith. That being said, we're going to pray. We're going to pray our Ephesians and Colossians prayers so that God will make us better equipped to do his work here. We're only here for a short time. He's provided provision to do his work here. And then when we're done working here, we go home and rest forever in paradise without any struggles, without any pain, without any sickness, without any aggravation. It's just blessed peace and tranquility, the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have in the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength with me, a believer. 
You work with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life. You raised him from the dead. And you gave him the honored position, the one next to you, the Father on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and all the names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him. You have made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. The church is his body. What good would a body be if all the parts were separated? The hand over here and a foot over there and a leg back there and a head over there. A torso here. Nothing could get accomplished. No work could be done. The pieces are all separate. It's when you join that body together that it becomes a physical force of strength and unity. That's why the, the church is referred to as the body of Christ, because together the body accomplishes things. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. I am asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way, with all of God's people, I will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so I will be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. And by your power, you can do infinitely more than I could ever ask or imagine. And glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. God, equip me for this work. That's what we're asking for. This work that he has for us to tell people the good news. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me with the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask that you, that I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves I belong to you, Lord, that I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness and you have brought me into the kingdom of the Son whom you love. Hallelujah. So I like to do it during every class, and this is the perfect time for this. If you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior, do it right now. Take a minute. And everybody that has, take a second to reconfirm your commitment to the Lord. Maybe you had a rough couple of weeks. You need to ask for forgiveness. God is faithful and just. Whenever we ask, he forgives, just like that. So right now, say, Father, I've sinned and I can't wipe the slate clean myself. Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me for the things I've done. And, Father, I believe that Jesus is your son, that he came down to earth, lived as a man, that he was crucified, and he died and was buried. On the third day, you rose him from the dead, and he seated with you in heavenly places. I accept him. I receive him now as my Lord and the Savior of my life. And that's the first time you've done that. Send us an email at agc at abundantgracechurch.com. Let us know. We'd like to talk to you. We'd like to get some materials in your hands. If you're in the area, come to church, 108 Indian Head Road in Tom's River. We'd love to see you. Welcome you into the family and welcome you back. 
title for today's class is You Have Been Justified. The moment you made Jesus your Lord and Savior and ask for forgiveness, God justifies you. He makes you righteous. You become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. You become just. Today's devotion that was uh, sent out an email and put on Facebook was called, Are You Just? Habakkuk 2 verse 4 says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are just. And you're supposed to be living by faith. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you have been justified, made righteous by God through Jesus. And because you are just, you should be living by faith. Now, don't beat yourselves up if you miss it sometimes. Jesus even said to the apostles, you of little faith. And those were his apostles. Those were the people that were with him. Walking around in ministry and seeing the miracles that he did. Sometimes their faith got shaken. Sometimes they slipped. And those were the, the apostles. So don't beat yourself up if you miss it. But when you catch yourself in fear instead of faith... Repent and remind yourself that God has justified you and made you righteous. And there is no need to doubt that his promises belong to you. Matthew 6 verse 30 says, Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Matthew 8, 26 says, But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And Matthew 14, 31, And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus is always ready to help us when our faith gets shaky, but we don't have to let it get that way. We are just, and we should be living by faith. Matthew 9, 22, Jesus said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. You are just, and it's your faith in God's word that will make you whole. Complete health and prosperity in every aspect of your life. Not just well, whole, make you whole, complete. Romans 8, 30 uh, to 33. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? What things? Sickness, disease, poverty, lack. Depression, loneliness, the challenges of life. What do we say to these things? This is what you say. If God is for us, because God justified me, who could be against me? Who could stand up against me? He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Victory in all things. Who shall bring charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. I've said it before. Don't beat yourself up either. Forgive yourself too. God justified you. You have no right to hold anything against yourself when God says the slate's clean. You're not above God, not even with your own conscience. God says there's nothing to remember. There is no sin. It's been wiped clean once you ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. 
Brother Hagen's got two great books out, Faith Food Devotions and Health Food Devotions. This is today's Faith Food Devotion from Brother Hagen. Psalm 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, stands firm as the heavens. And he wrote, sickness is not from God. I like to say himself took my infirmities as though I were the only person in the world and himself bear my sicknesses. That means it's the will of God to heal me and for me to have what Jesus purchased for me. God wants me well. Don't let your head think any other way because people have been religiously brainwashed instead of New Testament taught. They think, well, maybe God has some purpose in this sickness. God doesn't have any purpose in it because God didn't put that sickness on you to begin with. Sickness and disease are not from God. They do not come from God, nor do they come from heaven because there isn't any sickness there. When you get it settled once and for all that it's God's will to heal you, you have won at least 50% of the battle. Settle on the fact that God wants you well, and that it is not the will of God for you to be sick. Settle it, not based on what I say, Pastor Hagen, Brother Hagen here, but what, based on what the Word of God says. When you get the Word of God inside you, then neither the devil nor anyone else can move you from it. Why did Jesus take our infirmities and bear our sicknesses? so that we could be free from sickness and disease. This is the confession that goes along with that devotion today. God wants me well. Healing is the will of God because healing is in God's redemptive plan. Health and healing belong to me. Amen. Hallelujah. about your faith. You receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are just and you should be living by faith. Luke chapter 7, this is verse 1, th 1 through 10. Now, when Jesus concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, that's key right there. The first verse says, now when Jesus concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, the centurion heard about Jesus. And he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he sh should do this was deserving, for he loves our nation, has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I do not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed." For I am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and the other, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at them and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. The centurion had heard about Jesus and based his faith on what he heard. Have you heard about Jesus? Have you heard about what he's done for you? Base your faith on that. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Have you heard? Pay attention and listen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so your new youth is renewed like the eagles. 
Did you hear that? Base your faith on that. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Transgressions and iniquities are gone. We have peace, and we're healed. That was Old Testament, New Testament, Matthew 8, 17, that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Just what we just read in Isaiah. Matthew saying that it might be fulfilled. 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins in, on his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. Righteousness, being justified by God, and by whose stripes you were healed. Did you hear that? Hear it. The centurion heard about Jesus. You're hearing about Jesus. The centurion based his faith on that. Base your faith on that. Luke chapter 7, verse 50. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. There's no question in God's ability to heal. There's no question in God's ability to do anything. Just look around you. There isn't anything that's out of his realm of possibilities to accomplish. Just look how a plant grows. Look at how a person grows inside of another person. It's incredible. Think of how things are put in motion, the planets and the stars, each one in just the right position. All the time, everything. Physical, tangible objects are held in place by the power of God. There's a need in your life. God could put it in place. It's your faith that makes it happen. Luke 8, 48, and Jesus said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. By thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Luke 17, verses 6 and 19. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and cast into the sea, and it would obey you. And 19 says, and Jesus said unto them, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Jesus always wants, to go to, wants us to go to the next level. He wants us to rise up. Isaiah 60, verse 1 says, Arise, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Get up. Show off what God has done for you. And remember, don't beat yourself up if your faith gets a little shaky. Just reach out to Jesus. Some of these storms get pretty tough. He'll give you a hand and pull you in the boat, and the, the waves will cease and the storm will calm down. But he's right there, right there all the time. Luke 18, 42. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight, your faith, your trust and confidence that spring from your faith in God has healed you. That's the Amplified Classic. That's awesome. What is it you need from God today? Use your faith. Romans 8, 28 through 32. You probably hear these scriptures every time I teach. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. 
for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many. Moreover, whom he predestined, those he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified, those he also glorified. What shall we say to these things, these challenges? Tell you what we say. If God is for us, who can be against us? Things are going to come against us. Jesus says that. You live in this world. There's going to be trials and tribulations. Things are going to come. But he also says, be a good cheer. Because I overcame them all. Now, don't get confused. He says, I overcame them all. And it also says, when you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you are in him and he is in you. So everything he has done, you have done. He's overcome them. You're in him. You have overcome them. You have overcome every challenge. Have faith in his word that it's done already. We read 1 Peter 2.24. It says, by his stripes, you were healed. He already did it. He doesn't go by a calendar. He sees all things at all times. As far as you can reach into the future, he's already been there. He's already seen it. Things are already accomplished there. If you call yourself a Christian and you have been justified, God himself says that you are justified in believing, in having faith, and in asking for everything that he has promised in his word. You're justified in that. It's by your faith. Acts 3.16, the Amplified Classic. And his name, through... And by faith in his name has made this man whom you see and recognize well and strong. Yes, the faith which is through him and by him, Jesus, has given this man right here this perfect soundness of body before you all. That's a fact. In 2001, I was in a bad accident. I wasn't supposed to live through the night. That's what the doctor said, told the family, bring anybody you want to the hospital. He's not expected to live through the night. I had more than 27 fractures in this body, arms, legs. Broke my back, broke my pelvis. But it's by his name and faith in his name that I'm standing here right now. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. There's nothing beyond him. You have his word on the subject. You have his promise that he will fulfill his word. God is no respecter of persons. The word doesn't just pertain to certain people. It's for everybody. And every promise is guaranteed for everyone who accepts his son as the Lord and Savior. You get to everything. You have eternity in heaven to look forward to. And you have all peace, prosperity here on earth. Everything provided for you based on your faith. The just shall live by faith. God's word is full of promises, full of prosperity, full of resolution, endless possibilities. He says things that we could never ask or imagine he'll do.
but not based on his ability, based on our faith. God's ability was always there. Jesus said he didn't do the works. God did the work based on the people's faith. Jesus said, didn't say, go your way, I healed you, did he? He said, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has gotten your sight back. And we can use those scriptures for anything we need. It says, he who lacks wisdom, let him ask. If you need to see things, maybe you can see physically, but you can't see things with your mind that you want to. You can't see a way to get around a certain uh, obstacle in your life or a way out of a financial burden. Have faith that God can show you the way. And he'll restore that sight to you. He'll give you that sight. He'll let you see with your mind the things you need to, to do and say, the pieces of puzzle you need to put in place to get the victory that he's guaranteed because you're in him. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world in all its trials and tribulations and troubles. That's God's word. And he guarantees his word. Read those scriptures. Read his word. If you don't, if you don't pick up your Bible and read, you have nothing to base your faith on. Amen. Nothing. How did you hear how did you get saved? By faith, by hearing. You put your faith in something you heard. You put your faith in the fact that you believe Jesus is the Son of God. It's by your faith. In God's word. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And there's two scriptures you can go to that will build your faith right away. Two sets of scriptures. Romans 8, 28 through 32. And Isaiah 55, verses 11 and 12. We're going to close with these. We're going back 8, Romans 8, 28 and 32. We'll read them again. Because we need to hear them again. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. We're all called. You just got to answer the call and make them your Lord and Savior. Then this is yours. For whom he foreknew. There isn't anybody he didn't know ahead of time, is there? So that's you. He predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. That doesn't mean that he's making you follow a certain path. Predestined, he has a plan for your life. If you don't want to go that way, you don't have to. He gave us free will. But he predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. Because he was the first one that was born again and went to heaven. Moreover, whom he predestined, he called. Who he called, he justified. As soon as you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you've been justified. 
justified in believing and having faith in and receiving all these promises. And he glorified you. What shall we say to these things? If God, can be for, if God is for us, who can be against us? Who can triumph against us? Nobody. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? That's God's word. And this is what God says about his word. Isaiah 55, 11 and 12. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Hallelujah. That's God's word on the subject right there. He said, you can count on it. I said it, it's done, and it's going to prosper. It's going to accomplish what I said. Based, and if you believe it, on your faith. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for your incredible love. The more we understand your love, the more faith we will have in everything that you do for us, everything you provided for us. It's by our faith that we'll be made whole. Thank you, Father. And thank you to everybody listening is getting met at their point of need, Lord. Lord, I ask you to wrap each person in the sound of my voice. Wrap them in your love and arms of protection. Keep them safe. Keep them comforted. Keep them in peace. Bless their lives, Father. Bring them all together into the body. Bring us all here under one roof. As often as the doors are open, let the seats be filled. Join in together in faith, building each other up in faith, encouraging, strengthening. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you and have a wonderful day.